I'm Dale Bradley. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Communication and Public Development Film. And uh, the experiential learning course that I'm most involved with is a fourth year capstone course uh, that's open to all of our students, whether they're in communication, pop culture, or film. We had a student who had an intern position with the Niagara Region uh, government and to do um, a little bit of extra work on a regional economic survey that was out and she was looking at the survey and, and helping to put stuff up online and all that kind of thing um, and she noticed that it didn't really address the 18 to 30 or so uh, demographic in terms of labor in the region and she said well this should be part of the, a report right and uh, the region agreed and asked us um, halfway through the summer because she was doing this in the summer but as halfway through the summer, do you have more students who could work on this? And so we gathered, just kind of picked folks that we thought might be good. Um, we ended up with about 10, I think, in total. Um, we sent them over there, and it was really successful. Uh, and that got me thinking that some kind of course, uh, and not just a project in a course, but an actual course, for fourth year students that was oriented around this kind of thing, finding placements. Originally we were thinking more regional government, municipal government and all that kind of stuff. And if we could, to spread it out from there. Um, so we thought, you know, if we could get this going, uh, that would be great. So we actually did manage to get it in as a late addition to the course bank uh, towards the end of the summer. So we really were flying blind at the beginning. Um, but we did manage to get through connections at the region, some connections with um, uh, small artistic and cultural organizations and media related marketing, advertising, those sorts of organizations in the region because given our department, that's where our students' skill set was. Um, so we managed to place, I think the first year we had, it went from the 10 that we had in the summer uh, to 20 some odd. Um, and we managed to get placements government and both in government and in the industry. Um, and that proved to be really successful. Um, in terms of the placements, but we noticed in talking with the students uh, a fairly high level of anxiety about uh, what would you call it the kind of the, the the mundane do's and don'ts of the work environment. So we thought, well, rather than just placing students, which is what we did, and is more of a classic intern kind of program, uh, rather than just placing students in the next iteration of the course, the next year. Uh, we thought, why don't we add on to this uh, a course, a uh, typical kind of kind of lecture course, but driven not by us lecturing to them or me lecturing to them, um, but by bringing in guest speakers from various industries to talk about what it's like in those industries, but then also uh, some kind of uh, 21st century work skills, those kinds of intangible things that the students uh, already possess in a lot of ways, but don't realize it, because that was one of the things when we talked to them about their anxieties is that they didn't think they had these kinds of skills when in fact they actually did they just didn't recognize it so in having all those guest speakers come in and kind of address those uh, components of everyday work life uh, we also included things that are personality tests what kind of worker are you are you a sit back thinker type are you like a go-getter kind of chaotic type uh, all that kind of thing which they really seem to enjoy. We thought we're going to build in a reflection piece. Um, so they, uh, that was a, I guess it was the second iteration of the course, the proper course. We introduced uh, weekly reflections. So they would write small, they're very small journal entries. At first, they had a lot of difficulty doing it um, because they weren't used to writing that. They, they're coming out of a three year, three years of undergrad and they're used to writing research papers. Uh, so when you're asking them to write this very different and, and very kind of personal and, and reflective meta level uh, consideration of their own experiences, uh, they just weren't used to it. So by around Christmas, they started to get the hang of it. Um, and we had a small reflection paper due um, around Christmas. Uh, that's now become more of a question driven assignment because it takes a little while for these uh, uh, placements to really get going. So they don't have a lot to reflect on early on. It's more in the second term. Um, and so uh, they started to get the hang of that. And then at the end, we have a, a larger reflection piece where they look back on it. And that's where the journal proved to be really, really useful. Uh, because when they look back on what they were saying in the first term about their kind of anxieties, and I can't do this, uh, I don't have any skills, I've learned a lot of stuff, I've read a lot of books, I wrote a lot of essays. Um, but they realize that they have things like research skills and interpersonal skills, all that kind of stuff, group skills, uh, presentation skills that they didn't recognize until, or didn't recognize until we asked them 
to look for those things through both the, the workshops that we had with the guest speakers and through those reflection papers. Um, and that was, that was all uh, really great. And then in the third iteration of the course, uh, uh, we added seminars to it as well. And that I kind of refer to jokingly as uh, uh, work anonymous. Uh, it's sort of based on the Alcoholics Anonymous model, um, but kind of group therapy, uh, basically. So we had there the workshops, they had their placements, but then we also had this space uh, for the group. And I'd have to say the third year, then we were up to 30, 35, I think, uh, uh, students. So it was proving to be popular with fourth year students. Um, but in that space, it was kind of an open space. We'd have some prompt questions, but we'd get the students to talk about how they were feeling in in uh, all of their placements. Uh, and then a lot of things came out of that. And one of the biggest things being they all felt kind of nervous and anxious because they're thrown into a new environment. They're not sure of their skills, uh, all that kind of thing. So it was really useful for them, um, not just to express that, but to start trading around strategies. And then they started in those seminars, they would draw the links between like the personality profiles that they did. And they would realize, well, actually I'm a more not introverted, but I'm, I'm a quieter kind of research-based person and I like a quieter kind of work environment. And, and you know, we would encourage me to say, well, that's the kind of thing you should mention that to your placement, pardon me, your placement supervisor. And, and you know, they learned that they could actually modify their positions to some degree. Other people realize they're the go-getter, chaotic type. They need, you know, odd schedules and projects thrown at them and tight deadlines and all that. But they all realized they were all different. They all had these different kind of skills and that they had to be, uh, to some degree, advocates. Uh, once they realized this through the kind of reflection piece, um, advocates for their own kind of work styles and, and kind of needs and desires uh, in the workplace. So that by the time the third iteration had gone, we've added all of these components and they all seem to be working. So we had the kind of, not lectures, but workshop based component in the class with the guest speakers. We had the uh, uh, more kind of open, free form, question prompted uh, discussions in the seminars, and they had their actual placements. Um, so all three of those working together, I think really make for a robust experience on the part of a student, because simply placing students, they, they have these anxieties and these questions and they don't get addressed and they don't have a venue to do it and they're not exposed to skills that might help them deal with those kinds of anxieties. Um, so I would really, you know, if I was going to recommend something to somebody, that would be something that I would recommend is if you can build in somehow, it depends on the course. If you're doing it just as an experiential project within a course, it's a little different, but because this one is a capstone course, that's entirely based on a placement, um, in that kind of scenario to work in those workshops, um, and as well as the reflection and the kind of seminar where it's, it's much more open and student driven and they can just express their concerns. And I guess in relation to that, another little bit of advice that I would have, because this really drove the development of the course year over year, we're always tweaking it and, and, and playing with it, um, is to really trust and listen to the students and their experiences when they're in it, because as much as it's based on skills and performance and doing things uh, in a workplace, so much of it, this is what I've kind of come to discover, so much of it is also based on how they feel. I know that sounds a little bit new agey or something like that, um, but it's the biggest obstacle to them feeling comfortable with themselves and with trying to find the kind of careers and work they want to be engaged with is for them to deal with those feelings and to actually deal with the anxiety. I know it's not uncommon for folks to point out, you know, this is the age of anxiety for students in this kind of demographic. Um, and, and that really worked out well, but we only figured that out because we were constantly sort of asking them about it. And, and when we heard things back, then we would try and implement some solution to that, either in the year, if we could, um, or then in the next iteration of the class.